Welcome to In Living Color. I'm Keenan Ivy Waynes. We've got a great show for you tonight. Before I get started, I'd like to introduce a few folks to you. My DJ that keeps the party rocking all night long, yeah. SW1 in the house. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. And of course, you got to say hello to all my fly girls. Starting over here with Carrie Ann, Lisa, Deidre, Michelle, and Carrie. All right, we got a great show. We want you to sit back, laugh, have a good time, and I'll see you in a minute. Let's do it. Hi, welcome back to Love Connection. Told you we'd be back in two and two. Our next guest says she likes her men to be very wealthy. Let's say hello to Robin Gibbons. Hi, Robin. Hello, Charles. Don't ever call me Charles, I'll go off. <laughs> so Robin, tell us about this wealthy thing. Well, Chuck, I don't want people thinking that I'm the type of woman who's only interested in the size of a man's wallet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are things that are just as important. Like what? Well, like what's in the wallet. Am I right? Thank you. Okay. Well, Robin, last time you were here, you picked a man to go out with. Now you're back to tell us how it went. Let's say hello to Mike Tyson. Hello, Michael. Hi, Michael. Hi, Robin. How you doing, Chuck? Hi there, Mike. How are you? Well, I gotta say, I'm really ecstatic to be here. All righty then. Robin, tell us how the date started. Well, at first I called Michael, and of course things didn't go very well because he's just a boxer from Brooklyn, and of course I was a Harvard medical student. <laughs> what about you, Mike? What did you think of Robin? Oh, well, Chuck, when I first saw Robin, I was ecstatic. I mean, she had this, she had this really tight dress on, you know, the kind with the push-up bra, and her breasts were like popping right out, like hitting right in the eye, you know? And as soon as I saw him, Chuck, I said, wow, I'm in love, you know? Sounds like you two really hit it off. So where'd you go first? Well, first, Chuck. <laughs> We went to this lovely little jewelry store where I allowed Michael to purchase me a very lovely ruby, diamond, and sapphire collection and a matching car. Sounds nice. Did you give Mike anything? Lithium. <laughs> it, made, it made me feel really ecstatic, Chuck. Uh-huh. Yes, we know, Michael. We know. So, where'd you go next? Well, then we went to the most beautiful little wedding chapel where my mother was waiting with the justice of the peace and we got married. Thank you very much. Mike, what did you think of Robin's mother? Well, I got to be honest, Chuck. I wasn't too ecstatic. <laughs> you know, I looked at her mom. The first thing I thought was, wow, this lady really needs a hair weave. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry, 
Robin. I'm really sorry, her darling, but your mom's head, her forehead is just way too big. She just has a little, too little hair to cover it. You know? But I tell you something, though. What really separates Robin from her mom is class. Because the Franks would still bother me because I had a boiled egg, too. And I kind of cut one in the car, you know? And her mom made a big stink out of it. <laughs> Ron, we're almost out of time. Tell us about the rest of the day. Well, Charles, after the bank, the lithium began to wear off, and Michael went a little wild. Oh, Didn't come you, on, Robin. What happened, Mike? Oh, well, well, Chuck, it was really simple. It was quite innocent. You know, I was in the parking lot picking up the car. I'm waiting on Robin and her mom. And I see this girl. She has a really nice butt. So I walk over. I go, hi, my name is Mike. And then I shove my tongue down her throat, you know. And this guy comes over and goes, hey, that's my mother. So I punch him in his gut, you know. And he started making little warm noises. It was pretty funny. He was like, oh, God, I'm bleeding internally. It was pretty funny, you know. And it reminded me of the Bone Crusher Smith fight where I hit him in his third rib and then tried to push his nose up in his brain. You know, I came over with a whip. Whoa, 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 bing, bing. Down. Bing. Wow, that was quite a date. <laughs> Let's see who our audience picked for you. Was it Mike? <laughs> John Kennedy Jr. <laughs> or Donald Trump? Yeah. They picked Mike by 41%. So if you two would like to go out again, <laughs> ultimately, Mike will pay for it. Well, there is a lovely little fur salon I'd like to go to. Michael, I wouldn't mind. What about you, Mike? Oh, I guess it's all right, Robin. <laughs> well, be sure to come back and tell us about it. Hey, Mike, maybe I'll see you on Scrabble sometime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Hey. Ecstatic. E X K I T. All right? Are you going to tell him he's wrong? Well, that's it, folks. I'm Chuck Woolery. Until next time, may all your dates be a matter of public record. On July 20th, 1969, Apollo astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, and Slick Johnson orbited the moon. Collins remained in the command module, and Armstrong, Aldrin, and Johnson landed the small lunar module on the moon's surface. While the men were exploring the area, Armstrong received word from Mission Control that a system malfunction had left them with only enough fuel to take three of the four pioneers safely back to Earth. After conferring with Collins and Aldrin, Armstrong sent Johnson out to find a nice spot to play volleyball. Minutes later, the landing module took off, leaving Slick behind. Hey, come on, y'all stop playing, man. Hey, yo, that's not funny. That's not funny, man. Come back here. The mission was an otherwise perfect success, and an embarrassed NASA <laughs> deleted all references to Johnson from its official literature. Tonight, we salute Slick Johnson, the first black man on the moon. I'm Tommy Davidson with another great moment in black history. Yo, 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 all you bad bargain hunters out there, welcome to the Homeboy Shopping Network. Yo, we're the host with the most, I'm Wiz, this the Iceman. Chill. Yo, show them what we got. For all this stuff, man. It's like a warehouse set. For all this stuff. We got it. Let's show the first time. All right, we got uh, this. For your automotive needs, we got car phones. We got car stereos. We got car alarms. And if you act now, we could probably get the car. <laughs> Yo, give them the number. All right, um, uh, yeah. Operators are standing by. 555 four three nine six <laughs> yo our next item up for sale jewelry 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 look at all this stuff look at all this lovely assortment of gold chains some of them have been broken in transit though oh lovely diamond cluster ring oh wow look at this one oh man 
You gonna keep it? That's not, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, customers. That was merely a display item. We got callers already. Yes. Hello? Welcome to the Homeboy Shopping Network. That's my wife's ring. If I ever get my hands on you, you sleazy, slimy son of a... <laughs> Another satisfied customer. Yo, check these out. This is something really this. special. Now, now these are some, these are top of the line stuff, man. You know, these are some of the finer TVs you might find in some of the better hotels. Matter of fact, <laughs> these are the same TVs you find in the better hotel. Yeah. Now, Yo, check it out. They're a little wobbly, right? They're a little bit wobbly. But check this out. If you act now, we'll throw in these free Gideon Bibles. You just throw it over there, you know, like that. Check it out. Now, oh, yeah, y'all got not for you cable buffs out there, man. We got something special for you. Check this out. Check this out. Now. Yo, not only will you get, like, all the cable stations out there, but you'll be able to talk directly to the astronauts. Ain't that lovely? Show them the other stuff. Show them the other stuff. Now, this. This is something special. You talk about at-home baking? <laughs> yo, 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 all you gotta do is hook this bad boy up in your house, And man. what you got? You throw the card in there, boom, boom. or somebody else's card, boom, yeah. like that. More money, more money, more money. <laughs> Uh-oh. Do I hear a blue light special? I think so. Well, you know what that means. That's right. We're moving location. So, join us next week on the Whole Boy Shopping Network. Same time, different corner. Peace. <laughs>
My birth certificate, no problem. Mother's maiden name, I had that too. You see, this had happened before. He answered all of our questions easily. There was no doubt that it was his card. But I wasn't giving up so fast. I asked to speak to the customer directly. Then the lady asked me who won the Bob Hope Invitational Golf Tournament in 1978. I said, kiss my butt, bitch. Approve my credit. I had him. Use of obscenity over interstate phone lines is a federal offense. So I asked the store manager to stall him while I called the police. So they told me everything was cool and they started treating me real nice. A little too nice. They gift wrapped my shirt. They served me hors d'oeuvres and started doing magic tricks. <laughs> then it got a little late, so I got up to leave. Luckily, the cops got there in time. Sure, he sued us and won, but it was still fun to do and the store manager was grateful. You see, helping people is what we're all about. Equity Express. Don't leave your crib without it. Or your driver's license. Or your birth certificate. Or your high school diploma. Or your blood type. Or your passport. Or your dental records. Or your fingerprints. Or a notarized medical record. Welcome to Men on Films. We're going to be reviewing the latest film from a male point of view. First up is that controversial movie, Do the Right Thing. Now, I really like little Spike Lee's courage in making this film. I especially like the way he mixed the racial tension with the violence in order to give his message, Do the Right Thing. Come on out the closet. Don't be afraid to be who you is. Black, white, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Ain't that the truth, Ruth? <laughs> Now I'd like to talk about an exciting new film, Karate Kid Part 3. It's all about men working out their problems in a very physical way. It was all so primitive. Mm -hmm. And you know, I really enjoyed Mr. Miyagi, played by little Pat Morito. Ooh, and that Ralph Macchio. Three words, fab you love. <laughs> Boy, I hope I look that good when I'm 40. Stop. But I have to disagree. I disagree. There's just too much violence in this movie. Don't get mad. You better give me back my scarf. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. They went all wrong. What's all this kicking about? This is a movie about relationships. This could have been a beautiful picture about the special friendship between a mature, masculine, older man and a tender, ripening, consenting young man. See, I think America's ready for that. You know I know I am. I bet you is. Now I'd like to talk about a film I've been anxiously waiting to see, Great Balls of Fire. gonna touch it but the title alone gets two snaps up <laughs> now let's talk about some films that are soon to come out on video first up is black widow starring Teresa russell and deborah winger hated it <laughs> Also coming out is Miss Firecracker. Is that Gene Anthony Ray's new movie? <laughs> Holly Hunter. Hated it. <laughs> and we finally have 
dangerous liaison starring John Malkovich and Glenn Close. Mm. You know, John Malkovich is like every movie goer's fantasy. I found myself just alone at night just thinking about his intensity. Yeah. <laughs> what you think of Glenn Close? Oh, I loved him. <laughs> And I really have to admire the producers for Dan to cast a man in that role. I mean, that really made the picture for me. Hello? Glenn Close is a woman. <gasps> Clutch the pearls. What a sneaky thing to do. <laughs> well, looks like we're almost out of time. Would you join us next week when we talk about Mel Gibson's lethal weapon? I hope it's loaded. <laughs> you crazy. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We'll see you next week.